Steven here from History Hustle and I'm here on the Babanju Hill near the city of Nish in Serbia. And in this video I'm going to talk about Serbia during the Second World War. Now to explain that we have to go back a little bit. 1882 where the Kingdom of Serbia was declared. Now this kingdom got involved in three wars at the beginning of the 20th century. The First Balkan War, the Second Balkan War and the First World War. Now I'll cover these in another video but what you need to know is that after the First World War Serbia was one of the victorious nations and therefore it got territory from the dissolved Austrian-Hungarian Empire and Serbia eventually evolved into the Kingdom of Yugoslavia where basically Serbs were dominating Croats and Slovenes and this led to inevitable tensions. Now when we talk about Serbia during the Second World War it's hard to pinpoint what we're actually talking about because it was the much bigger Kingdom of Yugoslavia that was attacked by the Nazis in April 1941. After Nazi victory this kingdom got dissolved and most notably was the independent state of Croatia which was basically a puppet state for the Nazis led by the fascist Ustasha movement. I'm gonna cover that in another video. So when we take a look at Serbia or basically what was left of Serbia we see that the main part was occupied by the Nazis and other parts were occupied or even annexed by the Italians, the Hungarians, the Bulgarians and the Croats. Life in occupied Serbia was far from easy. Jews and gypsies were rounded up and deported en masse and also many Serbians became victims of brutal German reprisal actions. Many of them were executed on this hill. Perhaps the most notorious was the Kahujevac massacre where near the village of Kahujevac, apologize if I pronounce it incorrectly, the Nazis executed over 2700 Serbian civilians, mostly men and boys. This happened on the 21st of October 1941 and this date is now known as Remembrance Day for the Serbian victims of the Second World War. Now if we take a look at the resistance we can basically conclude there were two types. The first party were the Chetniks, a nationalist and royalist guerrilla organization that fought against the Axis power with their goal to restore the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. They were very nationalist and sometimes even hostile towards non-Serbian civilians. Also they found themselves fighting against the communist partisans. Which brings us to the second group, the Yugoslav partisans also known as the National Liberation Army was a communist oriented guerrilla organization that fought against the Axis powers. They had a stronger sense of unity and were less divided than the Chetniks. They were also far better organized and this eventually gained them allied support. Also because the Nazis eventually shifted their focus on the Eastern Front with the attack on the Soviet Union there were less Nazis here to keep order. But let's not forget the perseverance and the courage of the partisans that made them liberate large parts of Yugoslavia. But also they had their dark chapters in history, committing massacres on POWs, ethnic Germans and alleged collaborators. And so the Second World War in Serbia came to an end and there are a lot of aspects not mentioned here and feel free to comment below if you miss any but this was just a peek into a country during the Second World War that eventually evolved to the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia led by Marshal Joseph Broz Tito. And I'm gonna talk about him in the next video. Make sure to like this one and do not forget to subscribe. See you next time.